Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Getting Started series. This multi-part series is designed to get users proficient in the tools and capabilities available within the QuickTrain Modeler software. This chapter covers the various methods of cleaning and preparing the data for exploitation and creation. Let's get started with cleaning and editing our data. We currently have 16 separate point clouds loaded, as well as a DSM and some vectors and markers. There's also a web mapping service that's loaded as a texture. There may be times you may want to merge your data into one large file. So I'm going to go to Edit, Merge Models. I'm going to select all and deselect my DSM. So only my 16 point clouds will be loaded. At this point, in addition to merging, I can also interpolate it into a surface. But for now, I just want to keep my data as a point cloud. I'm going to go ahead and click Merge. And now my 16 files are merged into one. I can right click the file. I can rename and export out to a new file if I need to. Now let's check out our edit mode. I'm going to go to Edit, Edit Mode. This opens a toolbar with some quick access to commonly used functions for editing. I'm going to start by zooming into my data. We have three separate selection polygon types, with the main difference between these two being that the oval with the Z in it will be linked to my data itself and geospatially aware. The other option is the oval without the Z, which is actually linked to my screen perspective. So as I move around my data, the polygon doesn't move. And what this does is it allows me to slice off data above the data if I need to. For example, if I come over to some of this noise, I'm going to go ahead and reselect my polygon. And then I'd be able to remove those noise points without affecting any of the underlying data by clicking on the cut button. Yes, I want to cut. And now my points are removed. Within edit mode, you also have access to undo. So click on the undo button. It undoes my cut and my noise points come back. Note that this cut and crop button has the little eye icons next to it. These are cutting and cropping the visible points. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. But here you also have actions such as smoothing and flattening your data, repairing the DEM, reclassifying, as well as some vector and marker editing tools. Now let's take a look at some of these cutting and cropping options we have. We actually have three separate cutting and cropping tools. And here's how they might be used. So I'm going to zoom into the bridge and imagine we want to reclassify the superstructure of this bridge. But it's going to be really hard to select those points without getting some of those background points in there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use my screen select tool to isolate by drawing my polygon. And I'm going to actually right click the crop button. So by right clicking, it creates a different type of crop called a texture crop. You can see that here in our layer tree. The texture crop can be toggled on and off. So the data is not actually being removed. It's just simply being hidden. So now I can temporarily remove all those points behind it, better isolate that superstructure. And now I can reclassify them. I'm going to enter in for class 16 and click on the set classification. And now that that's finished, I can turn off my crop filter, bring all my other points back, turn off my selection area. And I want to color my points based on that classification. And now we can see the points of the superstructure have been reclassified without affecting any of the points in the background. We also have a number of filtering tools. I'm going to go to Analysis, Filtering, and then QTA Continuous Filtering. This allows you to filter the data based on any attribute that you have in your data. And the Continuous Attribute tool is generally designed for tools that have a ramp of values, such as Z, Intensity, XY, and GPS time. I'm going to click on Intensity, click Pack Attribute to Filter Channel. You can see my points are now colorized based on the intensity value, but by using this filter slider bar, sliding back and forth, I can actually filter and isolate the data based on any filter range that I'd like. You can do this on any attribute that you have in your data. Once you isolate the range that you like, simply click Crop Model. Without clicking the Crop Model button, nothing is permanent, so simply closing this window and all our points come right back. Another filtering option is under Analysis, Filtering, QTA Discrete Filtering. This is similar, except instead of a range of values, think of it as buckets of values. And that's really good for return number, number of returns, classification, and those type of attributes. I'm going to filter for classification. We can see all of our classes present, as well as the number of points. 
and simply highlighting the classification that you like will display the points on the screen. Again, nothing's actually changed unless you click the crop model button. And I'm going to click close. Another option for editing your data is using the polygon tools to select an area and hold down control right click. That gives you access to our context menu of actions. And here you can find tools to reclassify your data, populating color, which we'll show you in a moment, changing the color, decimating, which is thinning your data, flattening, smoothing, and exporting. Now I have my web mapping service loaded in as a texture. I'm gonna to zoom to my full extent and turn on my textures. And right now that web mapping service is a separate file that's overlaid on top of my 3D data. But what we can now do is go to textures, sample active textures into vertex color. And what that does is it actually pulls the RGB values from the imagery and appends it into the elevation data, the point clouds or the surface models. So now you can see the textures are actually turned off, but we still can see the RGB and that's because it's embedded into the point cloud now. And I'm gonna zoom in here and show a pretty common issue with imagery and LiDAR where they don't quite align properly. Uh, imagery is susceptible to some radial distortion and that's what we're seeing here where we have some of the purple coloring from the roof of the building draped onto the lower parts of the structure as well as onto the ground. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in here for a second. I'm gonna make my point cloud size just a little bit larger makes it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to draw a polygon over some of the road surface. And I'm going to hold down control right click. I'm going to choose the populate color set from selection. And what that's going to do is pull out some of the colors that's within that selection polygon. And now I can create another selection polygon of my purple building colors that's on my road surface. And now I can click push to selection. And it recolors those purple points to match my road grays. This is a good way to edit the spectral information that came from your imagery that you fuse with your LiDAR data. And you can use this on any combination of points. So for example, if we want to pull out some of those purple information, I'm going to draw my polygon around the purple roof. Click pull from selection. And now you can see we have some more purples and dark colors into our color set. Now let's head back over to our bridge. I want to introduce another type of editing tool, and that's within our profile analysis tool. I'm going to turn off my imagery. I'm going to create a height profile across my bridge, profile analysis tool. I'm going to measure this to 20 meters wide as, as an offset. We can visualize that by clicking on the mask to area in 3D, which temporarily crops out all the other data, very similar to what we did earlier. But instead of making the edits within the 3D view as an option, we can create the edits within our profile view. So I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to draw an outline around my superstructure. I'm going to click select points in selection area. And now I can act on those points by setting the flags, cutting, cropping, as well as reclassifying. What's nice about this method is I can use my scroll wheel to zoom in and I can actually get under the road deck, which is a little bit harder in the other method. So now I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso tool and go ahead and select some of that structure that's underneath the road surface and add that. Go over to the other side, zoom in, use my selection area again, select these points, add that as well. So now I'd be able to act on all these points together. And the last tool we're going to be covering is if we've gone through and we've cleaned up all of our data, removed all the outliers, and filtered the data as we wanted to, perhaps now we want to interpolate this into a surface model. So I'm going to go to Edit, Convert Model Type, and we're going to convert from a point cloud into a gridded surface model. This is where you can enter in the pixel size, so if you want a half meter surface model, as well as gridding options, so you have a little greater control over how the surface is interpolated or triangulated. And finally, just click Convert and that'll convert your point cloud into the surface model. If you have any questions or feedback about the content of this chapter, or any other topics in the Quick Terrain Modeler, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.